We are on the cusp of self-improving artificial intelligence. Every week we are seeing new projects in which AI is able to discover new knowledge, new math, new science, and apply it to itself. We are just at the very beginning of it, but today we have a brand new paper that claims to be the AlphaGo moment for model architecture discovery. What does that mean? What is AlphaGo? I'm going to explain all of it right now. It is such an exciting time to be alive. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Right now, the biggest bottleneck for scientific discovery and even more specifically, AI discovery is humans. Humans are the ones that are coming up with new ideas for the ways that AI could operate. When OpenAI introduced the thinking capabilities for models, that was an idea from a human. When the Transformers architecture was invented, that was an idea from a human. But if AI innovation is limited by humans, then we can only ever linearly scale AI innovation. But we don't want that. We want exponential scale. We want to remove humans from the loop in this case and give these models a playground to hypothesize new ideas, test their ideas, and validate them. And that ushers us into the era of the AlphaGo type innovation curve for artificial intelligence. All right, so what happened with AlphaGo? AlphaGo was a project out of Google in which they trained an artificial intelligence model to beat the best humans in the world at the game Go. This was an incredible moment in the world of AI. And what made it really special was move 37. This was a move done by AlphaGo in which at the moment the move occurred, all of the experts looked at it and said, well, AlphaGo failed. It is definitely gonna lose now. Ooh. That's a very that's Ooh. a very surprising move. I thought I thought it was I thought it was a mistake. But over the course of the game, it became clear that that was an absolutely pivotal move that humans couldn't even comprehend when they saw it. And that's really the key. When AI is able to self-play and have basically unlimited compute resources thrown at it to try so many different combinations of winning and losing moves, it learns to play on its own. It is not based on a human expert telling it what a great move is or what a bad move is. It is simply trying it itself, playing millions and millions of games against itself, and each time getting a little better. And that is a key element of what makes this new system so special. When AI is able to learn on its own without human input, it is able to discover things that humans couldn't, or at least haven't. It is able to see things in novel ways, unencumbered by the weight of the way humans have always done things. Box has been a fantastic partner to us, so I want to tell you about Box AI. With Box AI, you can leverage the power of the latest frontier models from OpenAI, Anthropic, and even open source models to build incredible workflows on top of all of your your documents that you already store in Box. Whether you're extracting key metadata fields from your documents, parsing receipts, reviewing invoices, asking questions across your thousands or even hundreds of thousands of documents, all of it is possible with Box AI. And the best part is all of this is possible without having to build your own RAG architecture. It's just done for you. And because it's Box, you know they have enterprise level security, compliance, and governance. And Box is trusted by over 100,000 enterprise organizations, so you're in good company. So please check them out. I'll drop links in the description below. They're such a fantastic partner, so go test the latest models with them, build on top of Box AI, and now back to the video. So now back to this paper. It took the same approach, the AlphaGo approach of allowing AI to do self-play and applied it to discovering novel AI architectures. And with this new system, it's able to hypothesize, code, test, and analyze entirely new model architectures all on its own. The only limitation is the amount of compute given to it. All right, so let me break down how this actually works. So the system is called ASI Arch. Now, one thing I kind of have an issue with is they are calling it ASI, artificial super intelligence. I don't know if I would categorize it as that, and that word is certainly loaded. So first is the researcher. It uses a database of all previous experiments. It proposes an entirely new neural network architecture inspired by both past data and human literature 
literature from websites like Archive. Very similar to the paper that we reviewed a few weeks ago called the Darwin Girdle Machine, this one picks the top performers as parents and other strong entries as references when designing new architectures. So it chooses the best ones and comes up with new proposals based on the previous successful ones. Then the engineer gets the work. It implements the researcher's ideas in code. It runs the code, trains the model, and catches and fixes any errors automatically. And this makes sure that any new novel approaches aren't just thrown away because there's bugs in the code. It actually just self heals the code, makes sure it runs, and then determines, is this a good approach or not? Then we have the analyst. The analyst reviews the test and training results, the logs, and performance against benchmarks. It thinks about why a model did or did not work and learns insights that it can apply to future generations of models. And it actually maintains a memory of all of these insights and lessons learned. And so that evolutionary loop happens over and over again. And this seems to be the favored architecture of these kind of self-learning systems. All right, so was it successful? Was it able to actually produce any novel ideas for architectures? Well, yeah, let's take a look. So it ran 1,700 autonomous experiments, over 20,000 GPU hours. Now, if that sounds like a lot, it definitely is. But remember, it's not only outputting all of the tokens necessary to write the code, to create the hypotheses, to think through it, but it's actually creating the models running the models and running them against benchmarks. 106 of those models were actually better than previous versions of models out in the public. But here's why this system and removing humans as the bottleneck in this system is so exciting. Now imagine rather than 20,000 GPU compute hours, we had 20 million. And also imagine we can do all of that in parallel. All of a sudden, the ability for us to discover new innovations to improve our artificial intelligence becomes exponential. All right, so what does this all mean? Now that we kind of have hints at what a self-improving artificial intelligence system looks like, now we just need to improve it and we just need to throw compute at it. That is the only bandwidth limitation we have at this point. And if it can work with AI discoveries, why can't it work with biology discoveries and medicine discoveries and basically any other type of science? There is no reason. And at that point, once again, we just need to throw compute at it. And the best part, they open sourced everything. The paper, obviously, the code, the experiments, everything has been open sourced. So this is a super exciting paper, a lot of implications from it, and we have multiple companies that seem to be publishing self-improving AI papers. Alpha Evolve, which yes, is by the same team that made AlphaGo. We have this one, we have the Darwin Girdle machine, we have the AI scientist out of Sakana AI. So much to be excited about. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.